Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Mobile Security Concepts and Techniques, Part 1. Today we're going to be talking about mobile device security, and then we're going to conclude with a brief discussion on mobile application security. There's a fair amount of information to go over, so let's go ahead and jump into this session. Of course, I'm going to begin by discussing mobile device security. Since the introduction of the mobile device, loss and theft have been a concern. Just about everyone has either lost a mobile device or had one stolen. In the early years, the major concern was that a cell phone was going to be used to call some foreign country or toll number and the owner would be stuck with a large bill. Now, with the rise in popularity of smartphones and tablets and the greater portability of data, much more may be at stake. This is especially true with the advent of Bring Your Own Device, or BYOD, policies in the workplace that allow users to use their own mobile devices for work functions. Some mobile device security concepts and techniques that should be used include Screen locks. All mobile devices should have the screen lock set. This includes screen savers on laptops. The timer should be set for a relatively short period of time to help safeguard data that resides on that device. Lockout settings should also be enabled. In the case of loss or theft, configuring lockouts will help to prevent unauthorized access to the device. After a specified number of attempts to log in, the device will not allow any further attempts until administrative action is taken and that administrative action does not occur on that device. Then there are GPS capabilities. Many mobile devices have GPS capabilities allowing the device to be located if it is lost or stolen. This is an important concept that is used in asset tracking. Asset tracking utilizes GPS capabilities to pinpoint a device's location. And depending upon that device's location, this may lead to remote wiping. Some mobile devices allow for the device to be wiped, that is all data and applications are removed, and it can do this remotely. This can be used if a device is unrecoverable. Full device encryption should be used whenever possible. Full device encryption will prevent a malicious entity from reading the contents of a device if they steal it. This is especially vital for laptops. A mobile security technique that should be used for device hardening is disabling unused features. Unused features may represent a security risk and should be disabled to prevent their exploitation. In some situations, it may be necessary to disable a mobile device's ability to use removable storage. And this is something that should be covered in an organization's BYOD policies. Application controls are another concept that should be grasped. Many mobile applications attempt to access unnecessary user information, as in they may want to use the location of the device when they start up. Controls should be used to limit the data that applications can access and to restrict actions that applications may undertake with the data that they do have access to. Then there's storage segmentation. Some mobile devices allow for the segmentation of storage, which allows for controls to be put in place to limit how data can be accessed on the device. All organizations should implement inventory control especially on mobile devices. All mobile devices should be inventoried and tracked. Then there's mobile device management. This is specialized software that is used to manage features that are available on mobile devices. Mobile device management software will also usually have a feature that will remotely wipe a device when given a command. Implement any device access controls that can be used to restrict who can access the mobile device and or any features on that device that do not comply with the organization's security policies. Now that we've secured the mobile device, let's move on to mobile application security. 
First up is encryption. Ensure that mobile applications are encrypting sensitive data that is stored on the device. Encryption keys must also be created and stored securely. Then there's credentials management. Security credentials used by applications must be implemented in a secure manner, including storing the credentials in an encrypted format. Whenever possible, a best practice is for the mobile application to authenticate the user and to base access to data on the user's authentication level. A determination needs to be made on geotagging. Some mobile applications store geographical information when they are used. A determination must be made as to whether or not to allow it. Geotagging may present a privacy concern. Some mobile applications allow for whitelisting. This is a list of allowed applications that can access features in the original application. This application whitelisting capability should be managed. Security experts need to make sure that they know what applications have access to other applications. Then there are transitive trust or transitive authentication issues. With transitive trust or transitive authentication, an application will trust an unknown security environment if it is trusted by a security environment that the application trusts. For example, application Z trusts environment T. Environment T trusts environment U. Therefore, application Z will trust environment U. This may or may not represent a security issue, but it should always be examined. That concludes this session on Mobile Security Concepts and Technologies, Part 1. We began by talking about mobile device security, and then we concluded with a brief discussion on some mobile application security topics. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope to do another one soon.